In this video, we'll cover how to use control structures and code blocks in P5.js. These fundamental coding techniques are crucial for drawing with code, whether you're doing the most simple or the most advanced kind of work. I'm logged into my P5 editor here, and I'd like to bring up an example. So I'll click File, Examples from the menu bar. I'm looking for one called Shape Primitives, so I'll type that in here and then just click to open. Then I'll click play and you'll see what this code produces. You can see we've got a grayscale geometric composition using some of the basic shape primitive functions like triangle, rectangle, quad, ellipse, and arc. So the results of this code are giving us a static image with no motion or interactivity. And the reason for that is because all of my function calls are wrapped in this function setup code block. When the sketch first starts, the computer reads setup like a book, starting from the top line, moving down to the bottom, and then stopping. Setup only runs once, and since there's nothing after that setup block in our example, that's all there is for the computer to read. So the order in which your computer reads your code is also called flow. So this is an example of static or linear code flow where the computer reads like a book, start to finish and then stops. Let's check out a different kind of flow by looking at another example. So I'll click again on File Examples. And the one I'm looking for here is called Mouse2D. So I'll type that into the search bar and click to open, then click play to run the sketch. Now you can see here, this sketch has interaction and changing visuals based on where I'm placing my mouse over the canvas. Now, a big part of the reason that this sketch is able to behave this way is because some of its code is wrapped in a different block called function draw. So that control structure allows this group of code to repeat again and again and again as long as the sketch is running. And that's a major contributor to getting this sort of interactivity. So this example is one of dynamic flow where depending on different conditions, the code gives us different images or different forms of interaction. The type of flow that we get from a sketch depends a lot on the control structures that we use in writing our code. Control structures are a coding technique that you can use to give your code special behaviors, like making decisions, repeating commands, and lots of other cool things. So in this code, we have two control structures. We have function setup and function draw. Now, Control structures look fairly similar to function calls, such as rect mode or create canvas, but they're different. Part of that difference is that a control structure is always followed by an open curly bracket and a closed curly bracket with some code in between. That whole group, the control structure, the curly brackets, and the code in between is also called a code block. So I see that structure here in my function setup code block, I also see it here for function draw. So I have the name of the control structure, the open and closed curly brackets, and then some code in between. Brackets and control structures always go together. I'll never see something like this where I have just a function setup without curly brackets. And that's actually why I'm getting this error here. I'll hit Command Z or Control Z a couple times on the keyboard to undo. And I'll also never see something like this, which are just curly brackets without the control structure name. So they always have to go together, control structure and curly brackets. I'll hit Command Z or Control Z on the keyboard to undo. You might also notice that the code inside of each code block is indented. That makes it easier for us to read, especially as we get into more complex coding techniques. We might encounter code blocks that are nested inside of other code blocks to give us even more sophisticated interaction or code behavior. We can see an example of that by clicking back to File Examples and searching for one called Interactivity. I'll go ahead and click to open it, then click Play. And I can see this one has a circle that changes color when I click it, but when I click outside the circle, nothing happens. So if I look at this example's code, I can see I've got a setup block, I've got a draw block, and then I've got an additional one at the bottom called mouse pressed. And that's looking for whether or not the mouse is being pressed. So I've got the control structure name for that, 
I've got the open curly bracket and the closed curly bracket and the code that's inside. Now, within that code block, I've also got another control structure. So this one is called if, and that's looking for when a certain condition is true or false and making a decision based on that. So that inner code block has its own set of curly brackets that are nested inside of the mouse pressed block. And the code inside of that inner block is indented another level. That just makes it easier for us to read and easier to understand the structure and behavior of the code. So using nested code blocks and additional control structures like mouse pressed or draw are a little bit more advanced than what we're gonna be doing this week where we'll just use the function setup control structure. So your code will look a lot more like that shape primitives example that we started with. I'll go ahead and pull that back up. So like we see here, you'll have just the function setup and then the primitive shape function calls inside to create your shapes. Okay, that's how to use control structures and code blocks in P5.js.